All right, today we're going to talk about tuning your stick response slider. There's a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding about what the stick response slider and feed forward actually does. So in this video, we're going to take a couple examples, take a look at what flight performance looks like without feed forward turned on at all. Basically what you'd get with a standard PID controller. And then we're going to turn off the stick response slider or turn on feed forward. And we're really going to talk about the expectations of feed forward and really when does it kick in? Because it doesn't really kick in whenever you move the stick. It only kicks in at certain spots and certain movements of the sticks. All right, so before we get into the video itself, I just wanted to go over the black box overlay if you haven't seen this before. What we have here is the roll, pitch, and yaw access to so the commands we're giving and then what the quad is actually doing for movements. The green line, as you can see here, and this one's flat and flat down here, but you can see we're in a roll move right here. That is the commanded roll rate we're giving it. The cyan line right here, that is what the quad is actually moving. So that's what the gyro measurement is on the quad. So as the thing is flying around, the gyro is measuring its attitude, rotation rate, and it's reporting that back. And that's what the pitch loop is reacting upon. So we're basically trying to get this cyan line to follow the green line at all times. What I have on this black box overlay is the P term. So you can see here as I kick it into this right roll, the P term spikes up to tell the quad to start moving that direction. And the reason it's uh, a higher spike here yet is because of all this error, this gap between the two that's called pit error. And this specific roll, that's about 14 milliseconds. So it's about the same delay as you get for your you know, goggle transmission back. So it's double, you know, your quads, you know, you're getting that, got that kind of delay for your fat sharks. Uh, and then, you know, you're getting that kind of delay on the quad movement itself from any of your stick commands. And this one's specifically without feed forward turned on. Now in this one, this example, we have the P term here, which is actually this red line here, but I also have feed forward turned on in this example. And you can see the feed forward spike, which is like an orange line, burnt orange line here that is uh, spiking up in advance of the P term. And you can see how the combination of the two uh, really is closing that pit air gap. Now this is down to like five milliseconds difference versus the 14. As you're checking those out, take specific note of the gap between the two versus what we're commanding and where the quad is tracking and see if you notice any general trends between having feed forward off versus feed forward on. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here, at least in beta flight, 4.3 is we're going to go to this feed forward gain slider and in beta flight 4.3 if you set that all the way down to the minimum it should turn off feed forward let's go here and it does, is not so let me turn these down so that must be in the configurator that's actually a bit of a bug actually let me see what happens here if I do this manually i gotta talk to the guys about that go back in yeah i got zero there zero here zero there I should be good okay so we got feed forward zero and uh let's just see with the log overlay what that looks like now, if you notice when I'm running kind of a smooth uh, rate or smooth moves, you're never, you know, the gyro is following the set point on my sticks really well, except for when I do those sharp moves. Even in semi sharp moves, or if I do a split S but I don't, but I don't uh, do a snap roll. Again, my gyro is following my sticks, no problem. And this is without feed forward. So you don't need feed forward for, you know, some smooth flying. You know, kind of chilling around, doing the cinematic stuff. And 
uh, and whatnot. Even some more aggressive stuff. Follows it just fine. So now let's bring that in. Let's crank up the feed board. And uh, see what that is. I got a little squirrely there. Um, and see what that does. See how that changes stuff. Again, let's get a bunch of sharp stick inputs. Sharp. Rolls. Then we can kind of see and compare that against what feed forward looks like. So for this, we're going to go into the profiles, maybe some beta flight 3.4.3. I'm going to go to simplified slider and in uh, 3.0 or 4.2, I mean, you can just go into the PIDs here and adjust your feed forward. But we have our simplified slider, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this feed forward game back up to 1.0 and we go down to apply tuning and go back into PIDs and check. You can see some of the feed forward gains I have here, you know, pretty high, 200. It's not crazy high, but it's it's higher and it's because I have the master multiplier punched up. So that's actually, that's what I want for this. So that's what I'm going to keep and go ahead and exit that and we're ready to go. All right. So again, you look at smooth flights, smooth moves. You really don't see feed forward kicking in much. So feed forward is not going to have um, really any effect when you're doing smooth moves. Uh, it's your, your gyro is going to track your rates, you're not moving your, your sticks quick. Where it is going to have an impact is when you do sharp stick inputs. So like that. Snap rolls, snap flips. Whenever you move the sticks really fast, that's where feed forward is going to come in and get ahead of the, the P-term in this case and really get the quad moving before you gain a lot of what they say pit error. So uh, that's where feed forward's handy. And people think like, oh, cinematic flying, you want to have little or no feed forward. Well, cinematic flying, if you're moving the sticks nice and smooth, then it doesn't really matter what your feed forward is. Again, you can see there that the uh, it's not really activated. It's only when I'm doing sharp moves that it activates, like that. So racers love it for any sharp inputs, and I would say cinematic and freestyle should love it too. Because it, you know, when you're moving smooth, it doesn't really activate. When you're moving sharp inputs or trying to evade something or correct, then it will. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, where it's not just a one size. Where you, you know, you have to have it off if you're doing one type of flying and another if you're doing another type. It's you keep it up high and it only activates when you're doing a sharp stick input just like that or flip or a roll or evade and you know, see and evade kind of a thing. Engines disarmed. So that is feed forward in a nutshell. Uh, you know this misunderstanding that if you're doing cinematic flying you don't want feed forward I don't know why that's the case. If you're doing cinematic, you should be moving the sticks nice and smooth and having a, probably a decent amount of uh, expo on your rates and things like that for, you know, to smooth out your, your stick movements, especially around center stick. 
And then if you want snappy moves, is you have to, you know, see and avoid, see and avoid. You know, you got something surprising coming up on you. That feed forward will take out the latency that you'd have from a stick input. In reality, feed forward really helps you just follow your rates. When you're doing slow stick inputs, you don't need feed forward to follow your rates. Any, most any tune and any PIDs will most likely follow your rates in slow movements. It's when you get into fast movements that you really need a, a boosting term because the P term's kind of just too slow. It has to gain error to, to even react and feed forward uh, acts on that fast stick input. It can see how fast you're moving the sticks right away. It doesn't need to do any calculations for waiting for error to build or measure the gyro or anything like that like the P term does. And it will just send that signal right to the motors. It bypasses the, the, a lot of stuff and it just goes right out to the mixer to get that motion when you're doing your quick stick inputs so that gets the motors moving so you don't uh, so you can actually follow your rates basically so don't be afraid of feed forward now if you go too high on feed forward you can actually uh, overshoot your rates that's essentially what happens with feed forward if it's too high and you get some bounce back you're basically overshooting your rates because it's it's sending too quick of a reaction and uh, your quad gets moving too fast and it kind of overshoots those rates a little bit but don't be afraid to use higher values 200 you know, on that, that, you know, if you're just using the sliders, you don't have to worry about the numbers. But if you're into the PIDs and you're looking at the PID gains and whatnot, you know, a 200 value for feed forward is not. I usually run around 180, 200. In Betaflight, 4.2, 4.3, maybe you get up to 225, 250. Above that, it's that's pretty high. But uh, it doesn't hurt anything. So as long as uh, it's uh, it's not going to cause any issues other than, other than just a little maybe a bit overshoot if you if you're overshooting those rates a little bit. But uh, other than that, don't be afraid to, to use higher values of feed forward, higher values of the stick response slider in Betaflight 4.2 and 4.3. If you're interested in the technicals of how to know like when you have that optimum feed forward value, go ahead and check out the Patreon. I have a video leasing right now for Patreon only uh, to take a look at how you thread the needle for the optimum amount of feed forward value. But uh, other than that, thanks everybody, and I hope this helps.